Hi, my name is CS, and I'm an electrical engineering student. And what I'll be doing today is an unboxing of the Maker Gear Prussia Mendel RepRap kit. Um, so I'm not really a big fan of unboxings because a lot of time, a lot of times, there's nothing special. You know, here's your expensive electronic device. Here's the power cord. Here's the manual. Woo! Packing material. Uh, this is a very large kit, and so this will probably be 10, 12 minute video. Um, just kind of going through. The reason I wanted to do this is because no one had done an unboxing um, of this kit, and it would have been nice to kind of see what I was getting, the quality of things I was getting, um, just so I could make an informed purchase. Um, I've already gone through this. I've taken out the bubble wrap and given everything kind of a quick once over just to make sure that nothing's broken. Um, and I can say right now, it's, it's a really good quality. Uh, now, before I get into this, know that this is a small company, so the bits and pieces, odds and ends, colors, and, you know, shininess may change between what I have and what you order. So keep that in mind. I'm not going to tell you the price because the price is going to change with the weather as well. Um, supply demand of the machine itself and uh, the parts, the cost of the parts in the machine as they go up and down is going to cause the kit to go up and down. So there's no use in me telling you the price. But let's get started. So here is the box. It is a 27 pound box. It is a rather, rather large box. And the mail lady was very happy when I saved her from carrying it up the stairs. So let's get started. So the first thing in the package was the receipts and chocolate to make you forget how much you spent on the receipt. There was a piece of paper and it gives you a brief rundown of what's in the box, um, the different grades of things, and uh, basically to take your time, that this is going to take a lot of time and that you'd be patient because it's going to take a lot of time. And here's some resources to help you when you're sick of taking so much time. Um, it's a big kit, it's open source, expect to take a lot of time you shouldn't expect to have this done in a night. If you do, you're insane, or you've already put together like 90 of these. There's a checklist, and it's four pages of stuff. But we're going to go through it. So first thing, and I have this sitting outside the box, but it was in the box, are the 3D printed parts. Now these are very, very well printed out for the most part. There's a few little frays on a couple of parts, but nothing major. And, you know, in general, it's very high quality. So no complaining there. Um, all right, so let's dig into this box. So I have this giant bag of stainless steel hardware. I'm not going to go through this line by line because it's washers, nuts, and bolts, a couple springs, and then the belt um, mechanisms. I don't know what those are called, but <laughs> they're in here. Uh, now this is all stainless steel, from what I can tell. Uh, if any of you are putting this kit together and are having any issues, buy stuff called anti-seize. It'll be like $15. It'll look like a tube of, uh, of like glue, like the glue sticks you used when you were a kid. Um, the kind that I like to use is, is the Loctite Silver anti-seize. That's just what I'm used to. Um, but anyway, stainless steel has a tendency to bind. Um, I don't know if this will be an issue on this kit, but if you do have that issue, just a little bit of anti-seize, it'll keep it from binding up, and you can look more deeply into that if you're interested in how or why that works. So, here is a box, obviously, and it is filled with stepper motors. There are four. Um, they are the brand Kisan or Kaisan, and from what I'm told, they are 400 step per revolution stepper motors, which is twice the resolution that you'll find on... Uh, on a standard um, stepper motor that you'll find in one of these kits. So high resolution is good. Um, that means that you get better prints and you can do other things with it later, like add lasers, which I'll be doing hopefully this summer. Big lasers. Wow. Anyways, <laughs> um, so here are the printed parts. Got everything in here is wood. Um, there's a little level in there, which will be nice. There is also the printed PCB, or, well, PCB stands for printed circuit board, so it better be printed. Uh, but this is the hot plate. 
and this is what you use to make sure that your prints don't warp. Because as things expand and contract and heating up and you're gluing them together to themselves and all this other jazz, they have a tendency to warp. Um, and that's the same whether you're using metal or plastic or you name it. Things are going to warp. So this keeps down the warpage. Um, there's the platform in here as well. Uh, just basically the bottom carriage. And part of it's already glued together, which is nice. Where did we get the hiccups? And we got a power supply. Yeah, power supply is power supply for the most part. This one comes in a nice box. Don't know much about them, so I'm going to assume it's a nice power supply. Uh, we have the plastic kit. And what's in here are the, uh, we got the stepper motor, some springs, and some Allen wrenches, um, some bearings. We have, that's mostly it, our brushings. Not a mechanical engineer. I'm an electrical engineer, which is much cooler, in my opinion, anyways. So, now that I'm bragging about being an electrical engineer, here are the electronics. This is the ramps. And what this does is this controls high amounts of currents. Uh, it's pre-assembled. And so what you'd use this for is this is what drives the stepper motors. And it's what drives the hot end. So it lets the current through and it heats things up or moves things and makes you happy because you're printing something. Um, this is the Arduino Mega. This is our microprocessor. If you're not familiar with Arduino, you should go buy an Arduino and play with it. They are, they will be your best friend. I love it. I make Christmas presents with them all the time because they're cheap and they're relatively powerful. Anyways, here's a power rail, screw terminals, so your wires don't fall out, you don't get shocked. We have some stepper, or sorry, we have some limit switches, which is what keeps your carriages from running off the edge and allows you to calibrate things in different headers and wires um, and some nuts and bolts. Also, for any of you kids who never put together large projects, keep things in the bags. You will thank me later. Okay, so here's another bag. <laughs> we have our wire wraps, we have our belts, we have our wire ties, and we have a couple other things that look like they're meant for the um, extruder. Uh, they're hard plasticky tube things. So I'm sure I'll find out what those are for, but that's what's in the bag. We have our ABS plastic. From what I'm told, this is a quarter pound. Uh, this is 1.75 millimeter. Um, like I said, things may change. So when you get your kit, if you buy this, you may get more, you may get less, you may get pink, you may get blue, you may get orange, whatever combination of those and other combinations you can think of. So anyways, orange, quarter pound of ABS. And we got a USB cord, which you use to drive the Arduino, and you have a cord that I assume you use for the stepper motor on the plastic extruder, because it moves around, and this has the right number of wires on the inside, five conductor it looks like. And we got our hot end, which I've heard nothing but rave reviews about. Uh, there's a small fan that you can use to cool your prints and some different little wires for the connectors and pins for the connectors and other little tubey things. I'm not sure what they are, but I'm sure they're important. We have a rather large roll of cap-on tape. This stuff is expensive as hell. Um, what you use this for is as a, uh, a thermal insulator. And you, also, you can also use it to put on top of your, um, your hot plate and it, it keeps things from sticking. Now, this isn't wide enough to put on a hot plate, so I assume this is for wrapping the hot end or um, some other jazz. And there's also some hardware, some connectors, um, some crimp pins, and what looks like a thermistor, which is what you would put on the uh, heated plate, so you know how hot it is. And last but not least, in this currently at 9 minutes 45 seconds video, are the rods. Now I'm not going to take these all the way out because it's just they're kind of oily and messy. But there's a lot of them. 
and they appear to be stainless. Um, at least a couple of them are stainless. And so you have threaded rods, and then you have your screws, and then you have your smooth rods. The smooth rods are in plastic, um, which keeps them getting all scratched and scuffed up, which is important when you have things sliding back and forth on them. Um, so there's a lot. There's a big handful. This is relatively heavy. So we're going to wrap this back up and stick them back on the tube. Okay. So, with that done and the box empty, I do a couple shameless plugs. So the first is I've got a new website, and it's called foxrobotics.com, like the animal, robotics.com, foxrobotics.com. Um, and at the time of making this video, I don't really have much on it, um, because I will be selling things I'm making with my machine, with my 3D printer from Maker Gear, the Maker Gear Prussia Mendel RepRap Kit. Um, so t take a minute and go look at it. Um, if it's up and running, what I plan on selling are basically a lot of science toys. Um, you know, going to, going to school, you know, there was always these fun little activities that you would do, um, but, or so, funny little activities you do in science class that, you know, they weren't, either we didn't have very many of them because they were expensive, or we had old versions of them that were broken because they were expensive, or that we made these really scary contraptions to look like them and act like them because the real ones were scary and expensive. So the cool thing about a 3D printer is I can print an ABS plastic. ABS plastic is the same stuff Legos are made out of, and that stuff can be pretty pretty badass, pretty hardy. Uh, so I'll be selling a lot of those. Um, different desk toys and whatnot will be on there as well, and there's a whole bunch of different geek toys. And when it comes to the science toys, I will do my best to make up worksheets and stuff for the kids. So, you know, I know you teachers are busy, and I know that you don't have a lot of time on your hands. So this will be kind of a nice kind of a nice thing you can do. Pick up some cheap things for your kids that they're going to enjoy, that they're going to learn from, and something that's not going to make a lot of work for you. Um, now, as far as other videos go, I will try to make more videos. Um, I can't promise anything. Uh, I'm busy. I'm working on my senior design projects. I am busy and very busy, and I have an internship, which makes me more busy. So I'll do my best to try to, you know, keep you in the loop with what's going on. Um, give you lots of videos of prints and how to do things on Blender and you know, Skyforge and all that other fun jazz to get you up and running. Um, and yeah, so. <laughs> There's the unboxing. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to you know send me a message or an email if you know me personally. Um, again, visit my website. It's foxrobotics.com. And well, have a good summer.